just finished building your amazing custom PC and you're sitting here thinking, hmm, what's next? Well, I have your answer. The point of this video is to get your PC into its working operational state so that you can start using, tuning, and enjoying it. When you boot the system up, you're probably going to be presented with a screen very similar to this one. This is completely normal, and you can just hit F1 to enter into setup, which is going to take you right into the BIOS. So now we're inside of my motherboard's BIOS, and this is the easy mode of an ASUS motherboard. The first thing you need to do is check your CPU temperature and make sure that it's within a normal operating idling temperature. This is gonna be anywhere from 40 to 50 Celsius, depending, but as long as you're within that range, everything is looking good. If you're seeing temperatures that are vastly hotter than 40 to 50 Celsius and they continue to climb while you're viewing them in the BIOS, there are a couple things that we can do to check out what may be causing that issue. The first thing that we can do is we can check out our fan speed for our CPU cooler or our pump speeds to make sure that we're actually pumping liquid through our custom loop. If you're seeing a CPU fan RPM or a water pump RPM, go ahead and look at the physical versions of those devices in your computer and make sure that the fan is spinning or that your pump is actually running. You can do that by looking at the fan or by listening to the water pump. If you're not seeing an RPM readout in the BIOS for your water pump or your CPU fan and you don't hear or see them running, you're gonna wanna shut the system down because that means your cooling solution is not working as it should. And you're gonna have to do a little bit of physical troubleshooting to find out why that is. To troubleshoot this, you need to make sure that your pump is getting power and that it's plugged into the motherboard on the appropriate ports. And the same goes for your CPU fan. Make sure that's plugged into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. If you're seeing an RPM readout for your CPU fan cooler or your water pump, and you're still seeing those high temperatures, it could be something with how your CPU cooler was installed. One of the most common mistakes that occurs with CPU cooler installation is that the plastic protection is left on the bottom of the CPU cooler and your thermal paste and CPU cooler are not actually making contact with your IHS thus preventing the heat transfer. Unfortunately, this does require an unmounting of the CPU cooler, which in the case of a custom loop means you will have to drain your system, but you don't wanna be running your system while your CPU is overheating. We're gonna double check that our RAM is installed into the correct DIMM slots if you're using only two modules. Your motherboard may not matter, but for my particular motherboard make and model, it called for me to put my RAM modules into DIMM slots A2 and B2. If you're not seeing any issues here, awesome. But if you are seeing some issues such as your RAM is not being recognized or a module is completely missing, you may need to reseat the module or it could even be a faulty RAM module. Now, one thing to take note of is to not enable the RAM's XMP profile or Expo profile just yet. We really wanna focus on stability so that we can get updates and driver installs completed successfully, which is what we're gonna move on to right now. Next, we're gonna double check the BIOS version of our motherboard against the latest version that is on your manufacturer's website. If there's a difference, go ahead and download the latest update, and we're gonna go ahead and install a BIOS update. Once that's complete, this is where you would also install an operating system. If you haven't done either of these things, I have a video that covers that, and I'll link it in the description down below so you can go and check that out, and then come back to this video and continue on with the process. Once you're in the operating system, it's all about installing updates and drivers. We're gonna start with Windows updates, and I know everybody hates Windows updates, but I cannot stress enough how important these updates are to the security of your computer and how they are designed to fix security holes that may pop up or introduce new things into your system to help secure you from potential malicious actors. Next up are gonna be motherboard drivers. Now these drivers are gonna enable features on your motherboard like wireless connectivity, as well as audio and other motherboard specific features. Your motherboard may have come with a USB drive that has all of the initial drivers so you can get these features installed and up and running. And then you can access the manufacturer's website to download the latest version since your motherboard had been manufactured. If you don't have a USB drive, you're gonna have to access your motherboard's manufacturer's website and go to their download section 
and download all of the drivers for the features that you would like to enable on your motherboard. Once you have them downloaded, you can just go ahead and double click on them and run the installer, follow the on-screen prompts, and it will install those drivers for you. Take note that a lot of times you'll have to restart your computer during driver installations, so don't be surprised if you have to restart your system several times. Once you're finished with your motherboard driver installation to enable those features, we need to move on to installing the GPU driver. You can access this driver by going to your GPU manufacturer's website and searching for your particular GPU in the driver download section, downloading the driver and installing it like the previous drivers. Once you're finished with that, you have an MVP or a minimum viable product, which means that your computer is in a usable state and that you could technically leave it as it is and you could use it like that for the rest of its lifetime. Now that you got your system up and running and it's in a usable state, there are some things that is holding your system's performance back. You can check out what those things are by clicking here.